All right, here's an example of how 2D vectors can work. And the problem is find the vector for the return journey. And what we're given are two vectors, which I've sketched here, already sort of in head to tail mode, where A, say we've hiked uh, five kilometers at 90 degrees, remember that uh, in mathematics and physics, the direction of the positive x-axis is 0 degrees, the positive y is 90 degrees, negative x is 180 degrees, okay, etc., etc. So it counts up going counterclockwise and starts on the positive x as far as 0 goes, which is quite distinct from the navigation coordinate system that some of you may be learning. Um, small adjustment, though. In any case, uh, then we've got B. It's 7 kilometers, so we turn right a little bit, and we proceed at 40 degrees. So in other words, um, this line right here to B, that angle right in there is 40 degrees. All right? All right, now to find the vector for the return journey, technically that is not, not technically, it is not a plus b, right? a plus b would be the vector that we would get if we went directly from the origin out to here, right? That is a plus b. But, and we usually call that the, the resultant, so R, um, just to give it a shorter name than A plus B. And that is great and all, but it doesn't actually tell us what the return journey would be. Now, the magnitude of it would be the return journey, right? You get to B, end of B, and you want to go home, so you go this direction, okay, for the number of kilometers that A plus B, or R, is okay so what we really want to find is the negative of r right that's what this problem is telling us or the negative of a plus b all right so how do we do this well the first step is find the components okay and to find the components we need to do a couple of things well first let's do it for a a sub x the x component of a what's that going to be well we can actually just write it down right a is completely along the positive y-axis, and so there can be no x component. All right. As for why that must be, let's look at the more general equation for finding the x component of a vector. And if you know the, um, the angle between the positive x and the, the vector, well, then you can find your x component here by multiplying the magnitude, so typically written that way, though sometimes I'll just drop the absolute value in the vector sign, just say a, um, times cosine of theta, where that's the angle between the positive x-axis and the direction of the vector. And in this case, that theta is going to be 90 degrees, right? That's this right here going to, to A. And so cosine of 90 degrees is 0, and so we end up with this 0. Now, for A, Y, well, like I said, it's all in the positive Y direction. So if the magnitude of A is this 5 kilometers, well, then we can just write down 5 kilometers because it's all in the positive Y direction, so positive five kilometers. And the more general equation is this magnitude of a, so that five kilometers, times sine of theta. And in this case, theta is equal to 90 degrees, sine of 90 degrees is one, and so we just get back whatever the uh, magnitude of a is, which is five kilometers in this example. 
All right. Now, the other thing we want to explore at this point, since this is the first example that we've done, or at least in mini lecture form, is why cosine, why sine? Why aren't the other way around? Okay. And we'll explore that when we talk about finding the components of B. So Bx, so the x component of B, well, now we actually have to apply one of these equations because it's B is definitely not all in the y direction, definitely not all in the x direction. It's a little piece in both directions. So we apply our equation, which in this case is going to be 7 kilometers times cosine of 40 degrees, and that will give us 5. 36 kilometers. Okay. 5.36. Sorry, the, I turned it sideways so it got a little, and the ink changed. Well, ink, quote unquote. Okay, now why this? Well, if we look at B all by itself, right, this is B saying, and we've got this, this is the x axis, so this is uh, 40 degrees. And we look at dot, 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 All right, this is going to be Bx, and this is going to be By over here. To get the adjacent side of a triangle, right, to get this adjacent side, this B sub X, we need to take cosine of theta, so 40 degrees in this case, but I'll just write it as theta, adjacent over hypotenuse, so Katoa, right? So B sub X divided by the magnitude of the vector B, right? That's gonna be the hypotenuse of our right triangle here. And so if we multiply on both sides by the magnitude of B, we just recover that equation right there, all right? And the same kind of logic applies for, <clears throat> for uh, the Y component of B which uh, will fit in over here, which is, and here, let me drop all of that extra notation. B with no vector sign, we'll just refer to the magnitude of B. We have sine theta, that will be seven kilometers times sine of 40 degrees. And that gives us uh, four and a half kilometers. Not exactly, but you can go out to a few decimal places, and that's, that's about as precise as you need. Okay, so we found all of the components, right? Find the components. Check. We've got all the ones for A, we've got all the ones for B, and now what? All right, so the next thing to do, okay, is to scroll over here and go up and say number two, sum the components because we want to find the sum of a and b and once we do that we can find the opposite of it to find this vector for the return journey that we're trying to find okay so sum the components exclamation point so the x component of our resultant this a plus b that we're going to find to find our answer is just going to be the x component of a plus the x component of b and we know what those are. They are zero, and they are 5.36 kilometers, okay? Now, over here, for our y, well then, that's the sum of the y components, right? And that's a little bit more complicated because both of them have y components, but not too bad, so five plus this four and a half kilometers, and that gives us nine and a half kilometers total for the Y component. That was easy. Okay, uh, occasionally it can be different, right? If we have uh, vectors with negative components, for instance, then we might have to do a subtraction here, but it's still the same idea. Sum means positive or negative, right? So that can be an addition or that can be a subtract in mer a subtraction arithmetically. Number three, Com compute uh, the magnitude and direction of R. So find R, basically. 
magnitude and direction. Every vector has a magnitude and direction. And to do that adequately, we want to take a look at R all by itself, all right? R is going to have an X component that we know is positive, and we know that it's about 5.4 kilometers. So there's Rx. And we know that Ry is positive and is quite a bit bigger. It's uh, about 9.5 kilometers, so I'll bring that up a little ways just to be roughly in proportion. And so the hypotenuse of this, right, if we have the X component and the Y component, those are the adjacent and opposite sides of a right triangle whose hypotenuse is... R, which remember is, pardon me, R is just the sum of A and B, and we're going to take the opposite of it, the negative of it, to find that vector for the return journey. So this goes back to Pythagorean theorem. We know that X and Y axes are uh, perpendicular to one another, so R sub Y and R sub X are perpendicular to one another. And so we know that r squared, so the magnitude of r squared, r is rx squared and ry squared, and that means when we put in this value and this value, then take the square root of both sides, because we don't want the square of r as magnitude, we want the actual magnitude of it. When we put all those numbers in, you should get 10.9 kilometers once you've rounded to a few sig figs. So we have the magnitude. We're only one step away from, well, maybe two steps away from being completely done. If we call this angle in here phi, the Greek letter phi, well then phi is the inverse tangent of ry over rx. Okay, if you plug in those numbers, you will get 60.6 degrees. Now why, why this? Okay, just quickly. Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So this is opposite, this is adjacent. And then that's tangent of this angle right here. But we don't want tangent of that angle, we want just the angle, we want this. So we have to take the inverse tangent of both sides. That means we're just left with phi right here. And we're left with the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent right there. Okay, so that's where it comes from geometrically. So we've got our magnitude, we've got our direction, and if we were to just leave it there, we might miss a little bit of credit if there's an exam problem because we want the vector for the return journey, right? We don't want A plus B, we want the negative of A plus B because we want to come all the way back to where we started on our hike or our journey. So to do that, well, to take a negative of a vector, if you remember from the other mini lecture, you just rotate it by 180 degrees when you're in 2D. And so the, the vector that we're looking for is going to be the same magnitude, right? But at 180 plus 60.6, which is 240.6 degrees. And there is our answer for the return journey. So this vector that I've drawn in here, returning to the origin, that will be this. All right, so thanks for listening and apologies for a little bit of background noise you might have picked up on. And I hope that example gives you an idea of how vector sums can go and they can get simpler and they can certainly get more complicated. So thanks for listening, see you later.